Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, in our ongoing study on Ecclesiastes. And uh, we're looking at the commentary by Jerome. We're going to take a look at chapter 10, verses 1 through 20. And in Jerome's commentary, it'll be pages 109 to 119. Let's begin with a text on block 1. And I'm going to read through the text uh, of 2, 4, 10, 12, and 20. The heart of the wise inclines to the right. Calmness will undo great offenses. Wisdom helps one to succeed. Words of the wise bring favor. And do not curse. A bird may carry away your voice. So we get like a five proverbs out of those 20 verses. And if you look at verse 2, the Greek, it says the heart of the wise man is at his right hand. That's the way it reads in the Greek. The heart of the wise man is at his right hand. In other words, his thought and his action coincide in wisdom. And then verse 4, a remedy or a cure will put to rest great sins. And then verse 10 addresses the surplus of promise in the kingdom. A surplus of blessing goes to the man of wisdom. And then verse 12 is important. Words of wisdom bring grace and favor. Final verse 20 reads uh, in a literal way, soon I dice in your conscience, do not curse, because a winged creature from heaven will carry away your voice. So it's about the conscience. And this lesson is about secular wisdom versus divine wisdom. And uh, Jerome was very attentive to that because Jerome studied the classics. He studied Greek philosophy. But when he dedicated his life to scripture, he discovered that there is a great difference between secular wisdom and wisdom from above. So that's why the uh, text emphasizes the man of wisdom. The man of wisdom brings grace. Let's go to block two and take a look at Jerome's commentary. A bad person mixed with the good can contaminate many. Likewise, wisdom mixed with cunning and vanity becomes a corruption. Seek the simple wisdom of God's truth. Simple wisdom. The gospel says the wise man's left hand should not know what the right is doing. There is only right for the just man. And at Christ's judgment, the sheep are separated to the right, the goats to the left. Now, of conscience, of consciousness, the wise man always thinks about the coming age. The unwise thinks about this age and what can be acquired in this age. The wise man negates the perversion of excess living. And like I said, this is Solomon looking back, and he realizes that, uh, that his uh, excess living during his youth, it was vanity and it was a perversion of what he should have been doing. It's all about the coming age. The unwise person's thought is vanity. We must negate all wicked thought because virtue purifies us from sin. Hagiadzo, sanctification. Never relinquish the work of virtue, which is a cure for sin. The wicked person is often caught in their own snare. We are part of a church body made up of the living stones of the apostles and sound doctrine. Heresy tries to remove these stones. Heresy tries to remove these stones and tear down the church, the doctrine of the church. So you can see these uh, 
first two blocks, we are truly examining a wisdom that is from above, a wisdom that is actualized through an indwelling Holy Spirit, not secular reason, but indwelling transcendence of Holy Spirit. Christ with us, Christ abiding in us, and the Spirit of Truth, the Numa to Aletheia. And so we really have to say that in block one, verse 10 is very important because Solomon recognizes that a surplus of blessing goes to the man of true spiritual wisdom. That's when true blessing comes. So if we look at the block three, we'll take a look at a time for speaking words of grace. Grace versus vanity. The wise person speaks words of grace. The path of vanity tosses about in ignorance and darkness. It becomes the language of heretics. Language and heretics. The Greek philosophers thought they could acquire wisdom through human senses. There you go. This is what the key is for this chapter. But they never reached the city of God. Isaiah quotes the Lord saying, I am the firm city, the city that is attacked. Philosophers have lost their way in the desert, says Jerome, not finding the road to the city of God. Wilderness wanderings. For Daniel, God is called the Ancient of Days. And blessed are those in the land of the church whose kafale head is the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is the head of the church. The good of this age is confusion and vanity. The good of the age to come is everlasting strength, says Jerome. And church leaders must labor in scripture, says Jerome. He had a very high view of scripture in order to strengthen the church today. So Jerome, by addressing spiritual wisdom in this chapter, is also addressing teachers within the church body. Teacher responsibility in the church. They should make bread and laughter, make wine and rejoicing, never speaking an impious word, even in the midst of tribulation. Even in the midst of tribulation. So Jerome very much looks at this chapter 10 as a, a time of a transition, basically, in his journal. He's already given us nine chapters of what we need to negate, that negation of vanity is necessary. Now we want to affirm something. We want to affirm spiritual wisdom, which speaks words of grace which participates in everlasting strength, which recognizes Christ as Kafali head of the Soma body. So this all comes together in a very important way. And so he's talked about the problem of egoism and vanity in chapters 1 through 9. Chapter 10, if you go to block 1, and look at number seven. A remedy will put to rest great sins. What remedy? The remedy of true spiritual insight. The remedy of true spiritual God honoring wisdom. That will put to rest a great number of sins. It will force you to reinterpret the past and recognize that you lived a life of vanity, and that was a living that was to be rebuked. Now we need to look for the remedy in spiritual wisdom and spiritual guidance. It means that speak the language of wisdom will bring grace and favor. And the conscience itself must be in alignment with God's word. Don't corrupt your conscience. Verse 20. Don't corrupt 
the conscience. In your conscience should dwell the person of Christ. Your heart should be imprinted with the person of Christ. So Solomon in his journal remains self-critical and self-evaluative, looking back now that he's older and recognizing uh, at this point in chapter 10, now it's time to turn to affirmation. We've worked through negation, a great deal of negation. All is vanity. All is without meaning. All is just uh, acquisition of possession, acquisition of gold and silver. And so he discusses negation and becomes very self-critical of his past life. Now in chapter 10, and it'll be 10, 11, and 12, now we work on affirmation. What I have learned is to affirm the wisdom that comes from God and God alone. And uh, Solomon learned this, and Jerome also learned this. Jerome was a secular philosopher. He was very much indebted to the Greek philosophers. He studied all the Greek philosophers, held them in high esteem. But later, when he turned to intensive study of Scripture, he realized there is a difference between secular philosophy and divine theology. And Jerome was known for being a scholar of translating Scripture. And so we can understand his emphasis here on uh, Christ as the Kafali head of the church and how a any leader in the church should be laboring in scripture laboring in God's word and he does take up teacher responsibility he says look if you're a teacher you have a great deal of responsibility to not be corrupted by heresy to not be corrupted by for Jerome, don't even be corrupted by philosophy because philosophy can lead you astray. Secular philosophy can be of value, but it can lead you astray. So be careful, be diligent, and never speak, never think an impious word. Even in the midst of tribulation, be a teacher who stands for Christ. Be a teacher whose heart is imprinted with Christ and speak the words of grace speak the words of the eternal kingdom. So it's a great lesson. It's a great transition chapter. Now we transition, transition from negation to affirmation. That's going to wrap up chapter 10, 1 through 20. And in the commentary, 109 to 119, our next lesson will be chapter 11. It's a very short chapter. It'll be just a few pages in the commentary, but we'll pick up on page 120 in the commentary, and next lesson will be chapter 11.